Hi everybody, this is Osprey from MyChartCoach.com and this is the marijuana sector video. Um, yeah, big day today for the marijuana sector. Uh, we're looking here at the marijuana index. Okay, so yeah, this is a cool way to uh, follow the sector. And, and as you can see here, the North American index was up 2.5% today. It's been on a nice run. It did have a dip into the close there, as you can see that pullback. That was the United States sector. You can see the United States index here had been on a nice multi-day Day run it was running intraday and then it sold off here into the close so there was a big steep pullback uh, any of you uh, CVSI traders I'm sure you saw that uh, so it ended up the the US index closed down three and a half percent but then we had the Canadian index just on fire um, it's been heading higher for multiple days in a row it closed up six and a half percent today so huge move for the Canadian sector stock so right now that is the place to be um, if you look here at MJ, this is the Alternative Harvest ETF, made a really nice move today, closed up nearly 6%. Call options were delivering nice percentage gains today. It came down here and it bounced off of the 25 support zone. That was from back here in June of uh, 2016. This is a weekly chart. This is the uh, MJ weekly chart. This is the first day Monday, so it was up 5.8% today. And then this weekly candle here, you can see the big push. You know, it had come down last week and it bounced off this 25 support zone that that was uh, resistance from back here in June and uh, yeah it was support from back here in September and so that was also the level when it broke above in January that it had that you know created the nice follow through and run back in January of 2017 and so it came down and it tested the, this 2016 and 17 support level last week that held it had a nice bounce and then now now this week there's follow through so so the key this week is to get above that 100 day simple moving average at 28.70 and above the middle Bollinger Band at 28.95. So if MJ can close above 29 for the week, that would be really bullish and you'd be looking for a run back up to the 50-week moving average up there, uh, just a little, little over $30. Okay, take a look at Horizon's Marijuana Life Science Index ETF, ticker symbol HMLSF. Now this uh, uh, ETF follows the Canadian marijuana sector. Um, it is thinly traded, only 78,000 shares is traded today, uh, but but it is a good uh, barometer on how the cannabis sector is doing. As you can see here, it has this nice bounce. It's, it's been running along with the Canadian stocks, and, and so you can see here it closed today above the green, gold, and red lines. You, uh, you know, the, closed above the, the Rasta colors there, above the 50, 100, and 200-day simple moving averages. If it can stay above the 200-day simple moving average at 1350, that would be really bullish. It needs to stay above that level. If you see it drop below 1350 that's going to signal consolidation and you could see this 1310 support zone tested where the 50 and 100 day simple moving averages are converged to the upside it needs to break that high close from july it needs to bust through basically this 14 resistance zone if you can get above 14 that's when it could really get moving now it is in a nice day run here it could possibly pull back and test that uh, support if it fails to stay above 1350 now take a look at canopy growth here closed up 11 percent today huge move for canopy growth after a big move on Friday. Now, now notice RSI now is above 70. You know, on previous breaks, you know, it, it got above and then pulled back quickly. It has been able uh, at, at certain periods of time to stay above 70 on RSI. So this could be the start of a next push higher, or, or it could pull a move like it did back in uh, June and, and dip right back below. Regardless, it needs to stay above 70 on RSI now that it's above that level. Fasto at 99 is signaling temporarily overbought. That, that's a super frothy level on Fasto. As you can see here, the peaks on this chart are, are, are lined up with that, that uh, 99 level. You know, 100 is as high as it gets on Fasto. So it's signaling that it's getting a little ahead of itself here. It's pushing super hard. If you look at uh, Plus DI, you know, you're hitting, uh, you know, these le the, the, this 40 zone here, um, you know, it, it has traded higher on Plus DI. It's gotten up into the 50s and 60s on previous parabolic runs. Uh, what I'm looking at now is trying to find the next resistance levels. Now, uh, canopy growth is on what we call a blue sky breakout. There's no overhead resistance on the chart. It, it, the, it, it, there was a high close back here in uh, January, and then that level broke in June with the close above. And then this 36 resistance zone was the key level to break. The two red lines here are, are, are the all-time high close and the all-time high. And so today, it, there was a close above both levels. So that, that signals, all, you know, this is trying to make a blue sky breakout. 
breakouts, trying to head to, to new levels. Now, what it needs to do is stay above 36. If it drops below 36, there's a small inf uh, unfilled gap between high of day on Friday and low of day today. You could see it possibly dip down and, and fill that gap and test EMA4 at 33.75. If it stays above 36, you can see the top of this channel. Uh, you know, it has this uptrending channel in the ascending support line it is now lined up up here, which would put it up into the 40s. You know, so that, that a move up to here, I mean, that would that would have to be, you know, a, a nice, uh, you know, 42, 43. Something like that's going to be putting it at the top of this channel if it does break out to that level and stay above 36. And, and also, I wanted you to look at the volume. Check out the big volume down here. So there's really huge volume behind the move. So that, that that's really what you want to see. With, with Constellation Brands now having a $6 billion, 40% uh, possibly plus up to 50% stake in canopy growth, it, it, it's really getting the sector moving. Also heading into that October 19th Canadian uh, legalization coming up. Uh, and so that's also a, a catalyst to help uh, propel the Canadian stocks higher. Um, as you can see here, and what's happening with the other stocks in the sector is they are takeover candidates now, or at least partnership candidates with other uh, big beverage companies. And so that, that's the speculation right now that somebody like Budweiser or, uh, uh, you know, is going to come in and try to team up with uh, s some of the other top dogs in the sector. If you look at ca canopy growth here on the monthly chart, you can see it's got a really nice breakout going. Um, you know, notice the increasing volume on the way up. I mean, that's that, that's really nice to see. I mean, the investors are loading heavier as the share price gets higher. I mean, they have, you know, dilution is a factor with this company. They do keep putting out warrants. Um, you know, they do have cash on hand now, but they do have a high uh, cash burn rate. Um, it, basically, on this monthly chart, what you want to watch is this EMA4 at 31 3099. If it can stay above that 31 level, it should keep pushing higher. Now, now if it drops below 31, that's when it's going to consolidate. As long as 31 is holding on the monthly chart, as long as it's staying above EMA4, the signal is just to keep riding. As you can see here, it's really only had one pullback since uh, you know 2017, and that was back here where it dipped down to EMA13, got close to that middle Bollinger Band, but it's pretty much just been a strong uptrend ever since. Okay, so let's look at TLRY. So this is the marijuana IPO that's been doing great. Okay, so this is another takeover or possibly partnership candidate. You know, it's a top dog. It's trading on the NASDAQ. You know, so like Canopy Growth, it, it, uh, 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 Tilray, um, and, and then you have um, uh, Cronus Group, uh, G GW Pharmaceuticals. I mean, there's a couple other pharmaceutical companies, but really Cronus Group, Tilray, and Canopy Growth are the three that, that trade on the big boards. But where, where uh, you know, with Cronus and with Canopy Growth, they do, both do have options trading. And, and so, uh, yeah, as you can see here, it, it is frothy on our side at 76, but this is the first time it's ever traded, so we don't know how high they're going to push this thing. Uh, you have Fasto at 90, uh, you know, plus the eyes all time highs you know it, it this is have the tlry is on a blue sky breakout the, the all-time high was back here just above 34 the, the high made on the 23rd of july and today that level broke and so now the, the high of day today is the new all-time high which is 37.46 and so that's going to be the big level to break to make it easy it needs to get above 37.50 so so if if tlry can start trading above 37.50 that, that'll see what wants to push higher if it's it stalls out here you know it could take a breather keep an eye on 34 you know that that was the previous all-time high if it drops below that that's where it could come back and test that EMA 4 at 3172 the chart is still super strong it's just pushing above that upper Bollinger Band sometimes when that happens it does come back to test support um, yeah the key with with a, a strong move like this is to follow the the 15 minute chart um, you know when a stock is on a, a blue sky breakout the intraday chart shows that the the resistance that's the only place that we find resistance now is on this uh, on the intraday charts. And so as you can see here, this is that 37.50 high. It's going to need to break above that. And then you have the high close here. Just, just We'll call it 37. It's just below that 37 level at 3.15 today. What has to happen has to keep making new high closes. So if it closes above 37 on the 15-minute chart, that's going to be your signal that's still pushing higher. Now, if it comes down here and it drops below the middle Bollinger Band at 35.37, that's going to be your clue. It's consolidating. 
bean. As you can see here, that middle Bollinger Band has been holding. When it, when it broke back here, it came down to that 50 simple moving average. That is the downside risk. If that 35 level breaks, it could drop all the way down to that 50 simple moving average at 32.57. Okay, take a look at Cronus Group, closed here at 12%. So yeah, so this, this stock is only at 66 on RSI. Now, the last time it hit 70, it, it pulled back. It's only gotten above 64 or above 70, uh, you know, th just this one time for an extended period of time. So, yeah, you got to keep an eye on that. Our Fasto is now at 83. The, this stock has a hard time staying above our 80. Uh, on RSI, you know, it had that one time back there in uh, on that parabolic run back in December into January, where, where it was able to stay above overbought levels on RSI and Fasto, but but usually it fails to do so. Okay, so keep that in mind. If you see Fasto drop below 80, that'll be a signal it's consolidating. Now there is a nice breakout on Plus DI, as you can see the green line crossed above the black line. Plus DI is above 80x. What you want to do is draw a, a, a line across the uh, recent highs, and, and you can see here that. It's just above 35 is a level it's topped out at the past. So, so it's getting to that to, to you know relatively frothy levels for this indi for, for this uh, stock on this indicator. You can see this 33 level, that's where it peaked out at back in March. Okay, so now look down here at the uh, daily chart and you can see. It, it, it broke above some key levels today. So there's this uh, s uh, descending triangle pattern. You have a, a descending resistance, okay? And there's two descending resistance lines. The first one goes across the tops of these two candles, and that lines it up over here with high of day. It hit that level and pulled back. There's another descending resistance line that goes across the tops of these candles. And so that level broke today. And so you want to see it stay above that, that 670 uh, resistance level. You want to see it stay above the, the 50 and 100 day simple moving averages. It had closed above the 100 day simple moving average at 652 on Friday and that did signal more upside potential and then today the, the 50 day simple moving average at 657 broke. So that was a really nice move and now it's above that red descending resistance line. So it needs to stay above all three and you know you have the 200 day simple moving average just below. All four of these key key levels it needs to turn them into support to head higher. On a dip as long as that 671 at EMA4 support holds and it stays above above this red line, it should launch higher. Now to break out, it's going to need to break above the high close here from June 21st, and then the high close back here from the uh, first week of June at $8. So so it's basically you know just below 775, 770 level and $8. It's going to have to get above those levels to signal it wants to keep heading higher. Notice the big volume spike today. When that happens, you have to be on the lookout for the stock taking a breather. Many times when there's a, a, a big volume spike, you know, the uh, 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 the, the, the chart will eventually break down. Um, look at previous uh, times where there was spikes. Okay, so red candles are usually followed for the stock. So keep that in mind that, that there's a good chance that tomorrow it takes a little breather. Just keep an eye on 671. If you look at the 15-minute chart, you'll see here it started pulling back. I did put out alerts in the chat if it failed to break that 760 to 770 resistance zone that this is where it could take a breather. And so congrats to everybody in the chat that did lock in gains in that zone today. Good job. Well traded. You know, well played. Now, now the, the key is to break back above e, the middle Bollinger Band at 743. If it can get above that level, that's going to signal it, it, it's still in play. It wants to head higher, and then it has to get above that 765 high close. If it can get above that 765 level, that's going to be the signal it wants to break out higher. If it drops below the 725 support zone, that was the low close and the pullback today, then you could see a drop down to that 50 simple moving average at 696. The chart is super bullish. The chart looks really good. It's just with with Cronus Group, when it gets the climax spike, it tends to have a, a red day the next day, and it is pushing well above the upper Bollinger Band, and so it could you know have another day and keep pushing and that, that that's what we're rooting for but just be, be prepared for a possible uh, breather okay take a look at GWPH here closed up 1.3 percent so it's not participating in, in the big rally this is a pharmaceutical company out of the United Kingdom they're the first company in the United States to get FDA approval for a CBD CBD drug and so uh, you know they're well ahead of the game there was a close on Friday above the middle Bollinger Band so this chart is heating up at 134.95 you know it's testing that 
level, it's, it's holding the 200-day simple moving average at 132.79. That's the red line there. It, it's at a flex point here. It's either going to get above that middle Bollinger Band or below that 200-day simple moving average. One of those two levels is going to break. You know, I, I, I'm pulling for that, that 135 level to break and for a run up here to 141, 142 and test that 50 and 100-day simple moving averages. That's what I'm looking for. There were bullish crossovers here on MACD on both time frames. It's just taken a little while to get going. Okay, let's look at ACBFF. This is Aurora Cannabis. A uh, huge move today. Closed up 18%. Congrats to everybody that got the alert last week that this was setting up. So, you know, I alerted everyone in the chat that this was, uh, you know, get, get getting ready to possibly go. And, uh, you know, it was setting up. It did, you know, if you caught that last video, this is the, the uh, chart from the last video. And I showed the, the, the unfilled gaps below. It has uh, multiple unfilled gaps. Well, it came down here and it did end up bouncing last week with, with, with C. GC moving the whole cannabis sector, Aurora Cannabis got lifted as well. And then today it got above that middle Bollinger Band and that 300 day simple moving average. This chart here will take a closer look at the action today. Um, you can see that nice close above that dotted purple line and above that, that blue line there. Uh, it needs to stay above the 50 day simple moving average at 526. It needs to stay above that middle Bollinger Band and that $5 support zone. If it could stay above both those levels, the 50 and 100 day simple moving average here at 611 and 626 are the big levels to break. And just above that is the 200-day simple moving average at 688. For everybody that's been in this for a while, um, you know th this is a huge technical development for the stock. Um, it, you know it could start a new uh, uptrend going. Uh, th there is a red flag on the chart. Th it, there is an unfilled gap between high of day on Friday and low of day today. It, it, if it stalls out here at the upper Bollinger Band at 581, if that 581 turns into resistance or it fails to break this six to six, you know 26 resistance level, um, you know it could. Come back down here and fill that gap, test support, and then make the launch higher. That is something you always have to be prepared for when there's a, an unfilled gap on the chart, especially for a penny stock. Okay, take a look at APHQF. Closed up uh, at 8% today. This is another top dog. Um, yeah, this is a chart that I showed in the last video, and, and you know this came down as well. It had broke below the, the the lower Bollinger Band here last week, and that was signal was getting really overdone to the downside. It does have a couple unfilled gaps below as well down here just above six dollars in this 550 uh, zone well well it ra ran really hard and now it's back above that uh, 50 uh, 100 and 300 day simple moving averages after closing above the middle Bollinger Band last week uh, th this chart right here gives you a closer look a as you can see here if it could stay above this 863 level that's the gold line then it, then it should head higher we're looking for a run back up to that 200 day simple moving average at 1010 okay so that's lining it up with the uh, high close up here around uh, 990 or so and so if it can turn this you know 850 860 level into support it should work its way back up to ten dollars okay let's look at IIPR here this is a real estate company uh, you know they, they buy property then they lease it out to marijuana companies uh, you, you, they've got uh, you know a big uh, footprint in the industry you know some top companies they are leasing buildings to and so yeah the I believe they they do own the building building where the largest uh, marijuana dispensary in New York City is located. And so these guys are for real. This is a real company. And, and the, uh, yeah, they have a cool business model. You know, they, they never touch the actual product themselves, but they do get a, a piece of the pie uh, um, in exchange for their leasing and rental deals. A lot of them are uh, equity type of deals where they're getting a share of the uh, company that they're renting the property out to. So it's something to look at. I, I recommend researching this company. It doesn't have big volume, but, but it has had some volume in the past and if you want exposure to the marijuana sector this is another angle um, if you look here it came down and filled this gap last week there was a gap between you know these two candles the 13th and the the 10th and then this candle last week on Wednesday filled that gap it came down here got below that 50-day simple moving average it didn't even quite make it down to the middle Bollinger Band and the 100-day simple moving average and it's back above those levels today so now what we're looking for is a break above the closing price in the 13th and then if it can get above that this 38.50 is the big level to break. That's the June 11th closing price. Okay, let's look at IGC here. 
This stock really ran into the close today. Um, yeah, you notice RSI now is above 58. You have Fasto up here above 80, um, a bullish crossover starting on 80X. The, the chart really heated up. Uh, you know, I didn't catch the reason why it was running, why it was running. It was, this all happened end of day, and uh, um, it just really got cooking and pushing hard. And uh, yeah, the, you know, maybe it's just sector related. Um, I, I didn't catch the news though. And uh, yeah, if there was some, uh, yeah, the, the middle Bollinger Band at 40, is the big level to hold as you could see way back here that was the last close above the middle Bollinger Band on this white candle and so this is a bullish change in trend you know it's the first close above the middle Bollinger Band since back in May all right so if it can turn that level into support a new uptrend could begin now it did run all the way up to that 50 day simple moving average at 57 the green line and if it fails to break that level it could come back down and test that middle Bollinger Band if it gets above the 50 day simple moving average look for a run up here to this you know, 400, 100, and 300 day simple moving average resistance zones between 51 and 56. Okay, take a look at CVSI. Uh, you know, really uh, it, pretty wild how, how this bucked the trend and they sold it off hard today. You know, this did hurt the United States uh, marijuana index with the 36% drop in this ticker. Uh, you know, it had been cruising. When, when RSI gets to 90, you know, it, it's just so frothy and so overdone. There's just not much more room to go. You have to be ready to lock and gain to any moment when this happens. You, you know how it goes. They, they were pushing it as high as they could so they could dump a bunch of shares and that's exactly what they did today they, they got it up here to 920 and, and, and look at that unload you know 28 million shares traded today a lot of people did load on the bounce so uh, you know there, there was some volume down here off of the uh, off of the bounce and so people are trying to play this um, you know the whole thing right now as far as I'm concerned it's all about this middle Bollinger Band at 380 if it could stay above 380 it's in play for a bounce Okay, if it drops below 380, look for a drop down of the 50-day simple moving average at 265. That 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 should be tested if it fails to stay above 380. Now, if if it can uh, holds that 380 level, the, the level the break's going to be EMA 13 at 449. That's going to be the first EMA to get back above. It has to get back above EMA 4 at 513 to get that really strong bullish uptrend going. You know, that that was the pattern back here. You know, th this whole like strong push was above the pink line. Now, now the candles are below the pink line, so that does signal downside risk. Today, bearish engulfing reversal pattern did form, and so this is a really strong reversal pattern. So keep an eye out for bearish reversal confirmation. Um, look at the 15-minute chart. This was a nasty pullback. They pushed it hard up here to 925, and then they just dropped the bottom out. I mean, look how they stare, climbed it up, and they took the elevator down. That that happens a lot. And uh, yeah, that's why you do make, uh, you know, you can potentially make more money on the downside, uh, you know, uh, if, if you were to have timed this uh, short here. Um, but yeah, this was a big bounce off of the bottom. Uh, notice how people did load down here. So, so a bunch of tr uh, shares traded down here off this 350 support zone. It did get back above. Um, you know, they might have unloaded on that bounce. Um, it, it, it looks really bearish right now on this chart. It's below all the moving average. Averages. It needs to get above EMA4 and, and the 300 simple moving average, basically 467 before it, it starts looking like it's trying to bounce again. And then it has a lot of work to do. You know, the chart won't be bullish again until it gets way back up here above the 50 simple moving average at 658. But uh, yeah, so we're going to keep an eye on it and see how this plays out. Uh, take a look at OGRMF. This is a uh, takeover candidate. Okay, it's been mentioned in Motley Fool as a, a possible takeover type of candidate. Uh, or, you know, it, uh, it's it's a smaller company that has a lot of potential. Um, it had been working on breaking this descending resistance line and turning it into support. It did that last week here with these candles above this red uh, descending resistance line. And then today there was a break above the 50-day simple moving average. That was the move we needed to see to signal it wanted to head higher at 386. Now it's also hitting the closing price here on August 6th. You notice how it traded above that level and then pulled back. That's going to be the big level to break. If you can get above this, you know, 4, 402, 403 resistance level, then it could run back up here into 430, possibly back up to 450. That's what we're looking for is a retrace back up to 450 if it can get above this 403, 404 level and hold that 50-day simple moving average at 386. Okay, take a look at BLOZF. This is that breathalyzer uh, cannabis company. You know, they came out with the breathalyzer and then uh, Canada is coming out with some different ideas about how to test people. I think maybe the swab or something.
something like that and so it dropped and then uh, yeah they're, they're still saying that they have the best technology and uh, yeah I think this was when that that all played out on this whole move and then it pulled back and it hit that 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 400 day simple moving average and it's been just rallying ever since and so now it's getting back up to the level where it was before all that news came out about Canada and the breathalyzer and that that whole drama you can look up the PR on that and check out that okay so this has been uh, you know a full uh, fib retrace of that bounce and, and so it's going to need to get back above uh, th this channel, this previous channel, and then above this 200-day simple moving average. That's the top uh, moving average on this chart. It hit that level today and stopped. Um, so if it can get above the 200-day simple moving average at 158, that red line, that's going to signal more upside potential. If it stalls out there, you're going to see this 1500-day simple moving average tested. It needs to stay above 145. If it drops below 145, it could retest this uh, middle Bollinger Band down here at 133. To the upside, what you're looking for is that 200-day simple moving average to break and for a run up to the high close from back here on the uh, 22nd of June uh, right at about 190 191 Okay, take a look at CANN. Very nice move today. Closed up 14.5%. I have a bunch of other uh, marijuana sector stocks to show you. Uh, I just, obviously, th these videos are probably way too long for most people anyways. And yeah, I couldn't fit them all into this video. And so, yeah, here's uh, here's one for you, CANN. I put this in the last video. And uh, yeah, it's been rallying ever since. It, it came down here and it took a little pause and it tested this middle Bollinger Band here at 260. And so uh, that was the key level to hold. If it held, that was going to be the reload level, and that did hold, and then boom, it had a nice bounce higher. So keep that in mind. If, if a stock breaks above the middle Bollinger Band and then pulls back, that middle Bollinger Band, the dotted purple line, the 20-day simple moving average, is the reload level if support holds. That's the low entry point. It's the bottom of the bullish upper Bollinger Band channel. Now, today, it did close back above that 300-day simple moving average. It needs to stay above that level at 302, and then you have the 50-day simple moving average at 324 is the next big level to break. Uh, it's hit Hitting that upper Bollinger Band at 308. So have to bust through those levels. You know, if they can get through the top moving average on this chart is the 200-day simple moving average at 375. And then notice today there was a big volume spike. So it's trying to get a new uptrend going. It just has to stay above three and break through that 325 zone. All right, thanks for viewing this marijuana sector video. You know, a lot of movement going on, uh, a lot of uh, opportunities to profit if you're on the right side of the trade. So yeah. Uh, Thanks for viewing.